Chris Jans, and uh, we're uh, momentarily about to talk to Chris Beard, the head basketball coach at Ole Miss. Uh, it's been a, an eventful first season for uh, for Coach Beard, and we'll talk to many others as well as uh, we continue here. The first games begin in just a couple of hours, and we will get you ready for them. You can see it. Coach Chris Beard joining us uh, here in Nashville, and uh, Coach... Coach, thank you very much. Uh, you watched you were practicing. Uh, how, how are you doing? And uh, your thoughts as we uh, get ready for all this? Is this your music choice? No. <laughs> yeah. Things are going good for us. Um, first year always has a lot of challenges, uh, but we're 100% focused right now on March. And uh, we have an opportunity in this tournament starting tomorrow night, so uh, hopefully we can take advantage of it. I don't mean to quote Charles Dickens, but it certainly has, has been a tale of, uh, of, two, of, two, of, two year, of two seasons for you. It was a really good beginning. There were some moments dip, and, and now you're in a critical situation. Uh, I'm sure you expect that when, during a transition, but, but how would you characterize what's happened so far? Yeah, well, the first part of our season, we weren't in the SEC. So, um, <laughs> That's good. There was a lot of games in that first non-conference where we could have won those leagues. Um, but no, I have a lot of uh, appreciation and respect for our players this year. First year is always challenging. Um, these guys have given us about everything they could get. Um, and so March is big. We've been talking about this all year long. Everybody's season ends up into a single elimination. Uh, college basketball, it's how it works. Everybody's going to play a game at some point where if we lose, we go home. Ours is uh, right here, maybe a little bit earlier than we would, than we would like. Um, but it's time, it's time to play March basketball. You've obviously, uh, you know, been in a lot of tournaments, especially the NCAA tournament. But is there a different mindset? I mean, other than you know, it's single elimination uh, for this week and, and and during during the tournament that that helps you prepare because it, it is it's a little bit different than uh, Tuesday and then play maybe playing on Saturday. Yeah, no doubt about it. I think everybody probably has a different philosophy at this time of year. Ours is, um, you know, to try to play our A game when it matters most. Um, pretty easy to sit up here and talk about, uh, kind of difficult to do, but all the things we've been working all year towards, you know, we would like to put in the 40-minute basketball game uh, when you get to the postseason. So for us, offensively, sharing the ball, taking care of the ball, having some balance offensively, and then defensively, just being committed to getting stops. And so, um, yeah, this is the best time of year in college basketball. This is the highest stage in terms of the SEC tournament, um, second only to the NCAA tournament, in my opinion. So we're excited to be here. Um, we'll see if we can't be a factor in this tournament. Coach, I, I'm interested as uh, somebody who comes in uh, from a very high level of basketball. Uh, yeah, every, you know, we're, 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 all, we're awfully close to the sun in the SEC. We've watched the league uh, really uh, you know, go from uh, a couple, six, seven years ago, a three-bid league to, to what it could be enormous uh, this year, and it has been. Uh, how would you characterize day-to-day uh, -day in this league during your first time? Yeah, this is obviously my first year in the SEC, um, but I'm very, very aware, and I remember those days. I remember sitting back, how is the SEC a two, three-team bid uh, when you think about the name brand program? So I can only speak from personal experience. This league is as good as any league in college basketball. Um, to me, it starts with the coaches, uh, then the players, um, then the fan bases. You know, I was so impressed with all the places we went and played this year on the road. Um, I think this is the top level of college basketball. I uh, also think that the commissioner uh, and Garth and these guys have done a great job. Uh, in my opinion, there's an active movement in trying to sell SEC men's basketball. So lots of positives this season for where I was sitting. It's interesting to see how a, a league can, can, can change, and it really has changed over the years. Uh, what do you hear when, when, you're, when you meet with the associate commissioners or the commissioners? What, what do they try to in, in enforce to the, the, the head coaches? I mean, we know schedule, but that kind of speaks for itself, doesn't it? Yeah, I've only been in one of those head coaches meetings. Those are always very interesting. <laughs> um, but one thing I heard more than once um, was national championship. And I, I think the league, that's got to be the ultimate goal, right? And, and how do you get a national champion out of the SEC? You've got to get as many teams as you can in the tournament. You've got to make sure that your teams have the best seeds possible in the tournament. You have to have a conference that prepares teams uh, to succeed in the tournament. And so, um, you know, I don't want to speak for the commissioner, but I think that has to be the ultimate goal in the organization, right, is to produce national championship teams. Yeah, and, and unfortunately, uh, unlike other sports, uh, it has been a while for the SEC. It's been a while, frankly, 
since since there's been a Final Four team, which it, that sounds hard to believe, but it, it's true. Yeah, I don't have much of an opinion on that first year in the league. So, um, <laughs> hey, what, what do you think about Lane Kiffin? Uh, I'm a huge fan. Uh, I, I've watched his career. I've, I've got to know him when he uh, was at uh, Tennessee uh, and then uh, followed him through uh, Southern Cal. But I, I, I think he's been phenomenal. And I, I, I was talking to Kyle Campbell a couple of minutes ago. And I mean, there, there are it's not just hoping. I mean, there are legitimate expectations. Well, well you asked me. You work with them on the, in, this, in, in the same organization. What's it like? Yeah, I really like Lane. We've learned a lot from him just observing what he's built. Um, and then certainly in the early stages having a personal friendship with him. So um, he's really good for Oxford. He's really good for Ole Miss. He's been really good for us as we build the basketball program. And speaking of that community, uh, yeah, we're talking, everybody's talking bubble right now and what you have to do. But uh, I, I do know that enthusiasm this year for your basketball program has really been uh, at record levels. Crowds have been phenomenal. Uh, that has to be reassuring. Yeah, I appreciate you mentioning that. Um, obviously, there's a lot of objectives year one. The most important is the scoreboard. <laughs> we all understand that. Um, but there's no denying that there was some things we really wanted to try to get done. And in my mind, in a lot of ways, we're ahead of schedule. Uh, we sold out games this year at the Pavilion in Oxford. All-time high season ticket holders, uh, seats purchased and used. And our student section is the highlight of everything. Multiple games for the student section was capacity only, club red. So lots of really good things going on with our attendance. Um, the Grove Collective and all the donors and supporters at Ole Miss, I think, have us on a level where you can really compete, not only in the SEC, but I think we can compete for the big trophy. Coach, in, in full disclosure, you asked me about Coach Kiffin, but I, I was on the campus a couple of months ago for a football game, and I had Coach Yo on, and I, I said in front of uh, – a really large crowd at the Grove and uh, on the show that she was actually my favorite coach. Uh, and I, and I, I've, I've had some blowback from Kiffin on that. Can you, uh, can you ameliorate this situation for me? Yeah, Coach Yo's special. Um, what I would say about Coach Yo when people ask is her team and her program definitely has a culture. And I knew it five minutes into walking into the Tui Center at, on the Ole Miss campus. And so a lot of respect for her. We're all excited about watching her team make a special run this March. But uh, just like Lane, uh, Coach Yo and all the other coaches of Ole Miss have been really good to us and our staff this first year. So totally different social media games, though, between Lane and Yo. Um, yeah, I, I think. Uh, which which is your favorite? I think, I think Lane's is overrated. Do you? Yeah, I, I think what happens. There's a built in. It, it's, it comes with certain celebrities in Hollywood. It comes with music that no matter Lane could tweet the the day of the week and people will say that was really clever. Uh, so he, he has that advantage um, really without even trying. Now, sometimes he is funny, but uh, I would uh, I think he needs somebody to watch over his social media account. Yeah, I think Lane has sneaky content. You got to kind of take a double look at some of the things. And I think there's always a message behind the message. Kind of an elite thinker. Obviously, he's very intelligent. And then Coach Yo, I respect that. You know, one of the core values in our program is tell the truth. You know, just, just don't mess around. And I think every day with Coach Yo, you want to know how Coach Yo is feeling. It's right there on uh, her social media. But both coaches are special. We've had a lot of fun following their programs in a lot of ways, including their social media. Do you have an ap approach to, to all that? Um, I'm way behind Lane and Yo. <laughs> um, we obviously have a lot to do with our program. Um, that's on the list of priorities, but probably not number one. But, um, no, we, we've had a special connection, I think, this year with our student body. And a lot of that goes through social media, our fireside chats, and other things we do to communicate with the students. Um, but we can learn a lot from Coach Yo and Lane, no doubt about it. Well, Coach, I appreciate you coming by. If you ever need a guest on your podcast, you've done a pretty good job of interviewing me here today. I'm, I'm, I'm available. Are you a suit guy? All I've been watching you for years. Like, do you enjoy putting the suit and tie on every day? No. No. Uh, <laughs> Where do you vacation? Um, I, I like. Uh, I mean, we, we try to get to some beach occasionally, uh, but we, we don't have specific places. What about you? So if I saw you at the beach, though, you wouldn't be suit and tie? No, no. Okay. Um, this is actually the last day. of it. We're here all week. Uh, the tie goes away after today. Yeah. Well, this year, uh, vacation's going to be in the portal. And um, <laughs> I'm looking forward to it in a lot of ways, um, but also looking forward to post-portal vacation. Is, is there ever a vacation now with the way things are? 
Um, yeah, I'm not one of these coaches that stands up here and talks about we work hard and all that. Everybody does. Um, you got to be kind of creative. It's hard to schedule a vacation two months out. Mm -hmm. um, but absolutely, we all find time to be with family. I got three daughters. Two of them are here at the SEC tournament. So, yeah, at some point, we'll take a break in the portal activity and uh, do something uh, vacation wise for sure. Well, I've enjoyed being interviewed by you, Coach. This has really been fun. <laughs> a new experience with uh, Coach Chris Beard. Thank you, Coach. Good luck Thanks. this week. Joining us as we, are, we continue here live from the SEC tournament.